All right, well, Casey here with CO Creative, where I'm teaching you web design and web flow one video at a time. And today we're going to be talking about how can you utilize VS Code in order to write custom code for your web flow project. And we're going to be specifically talking about how can you connect uh, VS Code with Webflow. If you've ever tried to code in Webflow, you know that it's super difficult to do that, right? There is a code editor, but it's very basic. It doesn't tell you if you've messed up or you created an error. It doesn't provide you any sort of formatting or anything like that. It can be a nightmare if you need to code more than one line of code. But what I'm going to show you today is how you can use the power of VS Code alongside your Webflow project whenever you're writing custom code for it. So let's jump into the computer and get into it. All right, so here we are, we are here in the computer and what we're gonna do, or what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you two things. So this is gonna be a two part video. The first part, I'm gonna show you exactly how to get everything connected up, how to utilize uh, VS Code alongside of Webflow. And then second, I'm gonna show you how to connect GitHub using GitHub Desktop and push these files to GitHub for safekeeping as a backup. Uh, there's some more things you can do with GitHub. We're not really gonna get into a lot of that, today but just so you know two-part video first part uh, is going to be how do you can connect this to webflow so that that may be all you need but if you want to take it a step further keep watching after that so the first thing we need to do is we need to get and open up vs code so if you don't have vs code then you need to go and you need to download vs code once you have that on your machine then you can open this up and I'm assuming that, that you already have that. So the next thing that we need to do is click on Explorer, add a folder. And so we're going to create a new project. I like to keep everything in a VS code, um, folder. And so let me navigate to that folder and I'm going to add a new folder here. And this is just going to be, you know, custom test is what I'm going to name this folder for our purposes here. I'm going to add that. And as you notice, this folder is going to be added here. The next thing that we need to do is we need to add a file. So we're going to add app.js. So this is going to add our JavaScript file. There's a few things that I'm going to add to the JavaScript file. All of this code is going to be in a blog post that uh, is going to be linked to this particular video. And so you can get that here, but I'm just going to copy this from off screen and paste it in. Essentially, we're going to use strict mode in JavaScript as well as we're using window.webflow to make sure that our Webflow project has loaded before any of the code that is inside of these curly braces are is pushed to Webflow will be activated on the screen. And so that's the that that's what we need to add or what you need to add to your project. I have an alert. So hello world here just to make sure that the project is connected. You can delete this after you have connected it and the alert is activated. But make sure that you write your code in between these curly braces right here. Uh, so that's going to take advantage of the window dot Webflow and push your code in the right way. Okay, the next thing that we need to make sure we do is we want to check and make sure that we have our node and NPM dependency. So I'm assuming that uh, you probably don't have this. So what you need to do is you need to go over, I'll put this link again, it'll be in the blog post uh, node, you need to download node.js. You need to want, get this one right here recommended for most users and go ahead and set that up on your machine. The next thing that you need to go ahead and do is you need to go to NPM and you need to walk through this and set it up as well. They have a pretty good user guide here, so you should be able to get this set up on your machine. These are going to be absolutely crucial for you to be able to, to work with this. But set up node.js uh, first and then set up NPM here as well. Once you do that, <clears throat> and it, you know, if you think maybe you do have it installed on your computer, you can go down here to the terminal and you can check that. So one of the things you can do is node dash uh, V and this will tell you if you have, you know, that particular version or any particular version of node on your machine. And then you can do the same for N P M dash V and that will tell you what, if you have anything on your machine as well. So after you get everything installed, this is a way that you can go through and test to verify that Node.js and NPM is installed. The next thing that we need to do is we need to uh, initialize NPM. And this is going to create a package.json file for us. So we're going to say NPM init. 
And we're going to run that. And essentially what's going to happen now is it's going to ask us a bunch of questions in order to create this package.json file for us. Essentially, all you're going to need to do is press enter. Uh, so just press enter a bunch of times. The only thing you want to make sure of is that the entry point is app.js, which is your JavaScript file or whatever you have named your particular JavaScript file. We're not going to connect to Git repository now. I'm going to show you how to do that using GitHub desktop. So we're going to click on through this. Uh, it's going to ask us if this is okay. So we're going to say yes, and it's going to run through. And it's going to create a package.json file for us. And so we have that created here. This is great. The next thing that we need to do is we need to add a, a start command to our script here. And this is going to allow us to uh, start our parcel bundle or whenever we add that in. So right here in uh, the script section, we are going to leave our test script. And then we're, we need to make sure that we, we write it just like this. We're going to do a comma, and then we're going to open up our... <clears throat> we're going to open up our quotes we're going to type start colon open up our quotes again and then the next thing that we're going to make sure that we that we that we write into you know this particular section of our of our file is parcel app.js again this is just the name of our you know, particular, particular folder. Um, and so that, that's what we want to make sure that we do. So what we have in our package.json file is good to go. So now we can go over here to our app.js file. And what we're going to do here is we're actually going to you know, add this parcel package or this bundler to our project. So we're going to go npm i parcel. We're going to click enter. And this is going to run through and it's going to add um, this parcel package to our our file. So this is going to take just a moment for us to do that. You're going to see these node modules are going to be created. We're going to have another package uh, lock.json file created. And there's just a number of different files in here. So there's a lot of things that this can do. What we're going to do for our particular purposes is we're going to utilize this to spin up a local development server that we're going to allow it's going to allow us to connect our VS Code, you know, editor here to our Webflow project. All right, so we have parcel installed. We also have our start command here inside of our package.json file. So we can go back over here to our app.json JS file, and then we can simply type the command npm start. And what this is actually going to do is it's going to spin up this local development server. You can see that it's it's running right here at this particular local host. Now, as long as you don't have another one running, this is pretty much going to be the local host that it's going to be uh, spun up at. So the next thing that we need to do, and we're almost done, is we're going to go over here to Webflow. So if we go to our Webflow project, I've already connected this page uh, just for our particular purposes for this. But let me just show you how to do this. So... You're going to go to whatever page it is that you want this uh, you want to connect vs code to or you could do this in the site settings in the custom code section you can do that there or you can do this per page so for instance if i wanted to you know add some animations with gsap to my about page then i can go in and paste this inside of the head tag so that's what i've done here now what you want to do if you notice here what they're giving you here is just this local server we need to add a few things to that. We need to add a script tag to that so that uh, it's going to run correctly inside of Webflow, as well as we need to add an SRC or source. We're going to type. We're going to add in what they gave us down here in VS Code, and then we're going to add to that <clears throat> a slash app.js or whatever you have named your JavaScript file. You're going to close, you know, the opening script tag. And then you're going to close the script tag all together. You're going to save that. You're going to publish it. After this gets finished publishing, we're going to open up our, in my case, my about page. And so as soon as that gets done, there we go. We're going to see, so you see how long it takes. And this is why VS Code is so, or why this connection to VS Code is going to be so powerful. We're not going to have to update a little piece of code there in the code editor, publish the site, wait for it to publish before we could even see if what we wrote is exactly what we need to happen. Go to our production. And again, look, we are active. So we have our alert, hello world. 
So now we're good to go. And we can come back over here and say we want to change this alert or we want to change anything. Say we're just going to make it hello or maybe you write some other code. You save that. You come back over here. All you have to do is reload the page. And <clears throat> our file has our file is loaded. So we're good to go. You are connected at this point. You can continue to use this project to write all the code that you want for your Webflow project. You can just reload the page and see what changes are taking place. So that's the end of part one. If you want to take this to the next level, we're going to connect GitHub. Um, okay, now we're going to show you how to connect GitHub uh, to your to your to your project. All right, so what you need is you need to make sure that you have GitHub an account and you need to make sure that you have GitHub desktop installed on your machine. So here uh, you can download GitHub desktop. You can download it for your Mac or whatever device that you're on. It probably is going to recognize which device it is. So just go ahead and download that. You want to make sure that you have a GitHub account. So go ahead and set up your GitHub account. Then once you get those two connected, so get your GitHub account set up, then get GitHub desktop set up and connected to your GitHub account. Now we can go to the next step. And so the next step that we want to do is we actually want to make sure that we um, create a repository. So we're going to go here and there's a number of ways that you can create a repository. You can go to file, new repository. You can click right here and click add, create a new repository. And so that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm just going to name this test three because I've already got a number of other ones. It, for our purposes in this particular case, really all you need to do is create and put a name. You can create a description, make sure that you've chosen a path for it. You can initialize a uh, readme if you would like or you can add that later. We're going to add a get ignore so don't worry about that and license you can add that if you don't if you want to. You know, I think all you really need to do is add a name to this. Click create repository. So, our repository has been created. We're not going to publish it just yet because well, we don't really have anything in it. So, what we need to do is we need to go back over here and we see we have test 3. I'm just going to show you the folder structure that I have. So, inside of you know, my GitHub folder, which is connected to the repository, I have test number three. And then here's what we've been working with here with our custom, you know, test project that we created. Now, if you were going to do this, you know, if you knew that you were going to connect GitHub, one thing that you need to do right out of the gate is you could just go to GitHub desktop, create your repository, and then do everything that I talked about in part one now inside of this repository folder down here at this test three or whatever you're going to name it to be that way whenever you publish you know you're good to go so we didn't do that this way because i wanted to show you part one and now i want to show you part two in case you want to use github so for our purposes all i'm going to do is i'm going to take these files and i'm going to copy them out of the folder that we created and i'm going to put them down here in test three when that happens, we're going to lose a lot of different things. Um, you know, it's going to show us that it's not there. So all I'm going to do is just going to get rid of that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over here to my folders. And one of the easiest ways that I can get rid of this now, one of the easiest ways to open up a folder in VS Code is simply to take this folder, go down to your toolbar if you have a Mac, and just hover over it, let it go, and it's going to open up this folder for us. Now, the first thing that we need to do is we need to create, before we publish this repository, is we need to create a git ignore file. So we can click file dot git ignore. And what we need to do is we need to post paste a couple of different things in here. We need to ignore a couple of different folders. So I'm going to copy this from all screen. I'm going to put it on here. I'll tell you what we're ignoring. We're ignoring the disk dist folder. We're going to ignore the node modules folder, as well as we're going to know, ignore some of the cache that gets created here. And in, in a Mac, sometimes this file gets created in our folders, .ds store. So I'm putting that here. If you don't have a Mac, you don't need to worry about that. If we go back over here, you're going to notice that those files that were originally here are gone. And what is left are the four files that are going to be uploaded. And here is going to be our... Uh, it's going to tell us exactly what it's going to do. So what we're going to do at this point is we're going to publish our repository. This is going to make an initial commit for us, but then we're going to have to make another publish after this. So test three, publish repository. Okay, so now this has made our initial commit. So then now the next thing we can do is we could just say something like uploaded files. Um, we're going to commit that to main, and you can add a description if you would like. Then you're going to push this to 
origin. It's not gonna take that long. Now we're gonna view on GitHub and I'm gonna show you why we did that twice. So as you see, all of our files are indeed here. And if you go back and you look at the different commits on our initial commit, you know, essentially this git attribute file was uploaded. And then if we go back over here to this, we're going to see that we uploaded, you know, these different, different files as well. Um, <clears throat> all right. So we've made that initial commit. We've got our files up there. And now at this point, you know, all you need to do is go back to your app.json file and, um, you know, Say I'm going to write some more code for our purposes. I'm just going to write, you know, a console.log. And if I go back over here, you're going to notice that, look, it indeed sees that I wrote a console.log or I wrote any other code in this particular platform. And it's going to show me that. So now what I can do is it's just it's prompting me here as well. Uh, I can say update app.js. You know, I can type some description here. I can go ahead and commit this to main. I can push it. And then if we go back over here, we can see that now we have three commits. We've updated app.js and that additional line has been added to our code. You can add and delete all kinds of different things. There's a number of different stuff that you can do with GitHub for our purposes. And, and probably what you're gonna wanna do is just simply back up your files um, and back up your code base as you are writing that so that you don't lose things. So if it's just going to be a couple lines or just a simple little deal that you're writing and you just need to utilize VS code to make sure everything is right, you're good to go. You don't need to, to go and make this extra step here as far as utilizing GitHub. You can then go ahead and just take that code out of VS code and you can paste that into your Webflow project. But if you are working for a couple of days, if your project is going long, if you're adding a number of different things, you, you might know that you might need to go back and, and update some of this code. And before you, you know, hand off your project and, and make you know, the website go live, then you would use GitHub uh, because it will be a good way to back up, back up your file and to back up your code so that you don't lose anything because the last thing you want is to have to write you know hundreds of lines of code you have all kind of different things that are inside of your project and now your computer crashes and you don't have a backup oh that's a ton of work that you have lost and so github is going to come in very handy in that particular case or even just to store you know the example file uh, for use later so if you got some value out of this video, would you like uh, the video? Th give me a thumbs up. It really helps, you know, get some more distribution for this particular uh, video as well as, you know, give me a comment down in the section. Tell me how you're using this or tell me what other videos you might want to see me make. And I'll try to make those in the future. Again, there's going to be a blog post that is associated with this. It's going to be down in the description. So you can go and check that out. I'll have a full write up of all of the different steps that we have walked through here, as well as the different code and everything that you need to paste in, or you need to paste that in and links to, you know, the different things that you need to download. Hope to see you on the next video.